talking about Islamophobia or homophobia or racism or sexism or any of the policies that would flow from those uh, misguided positions. Okay, if I Please. could just uh, jump on the tail end of that about this issue that came to light in the last debate about the 2007 uh, comprehensive immigration reform that Hillary co-sponsored and that Bernie voted against, his excuse for voting against it was that it would create a second-class citizen. And, and I just want to set the record straight that a second-class citizen already exists in this country. Yeah. And many of them <laughs> are willing to accept that status so that things can change for their children. And there was enough in that comprehensive immigration reform bill that would have changed so much for their next generation. And so I think this goes back to the point that Chelsea was saying about let's not let good, let's let's not let perfect be the enemy of good. Let's not elect a president who's going to be an all or nothing president, but a president who's willing to know when to take progress that is actually going to change people's lives. Yeah. I'll just put this out here. I'm a lifelong independent voter, a lifelong skeptic of the duopoly process that we have in this country, and on several fronts, a disenfranchised citizen, and I would go so far as second class on some of those fronts. So I know that your mother is very proud of her civil rights work with Chip, and that she's very proud to have said that the ADA was an important uh, step, but, but a beginning step. And I know that she wants to work to create jobs for us. But before we get jobs, we need to have services. We need to have those services, not on the basis of disability level or cost. We need to have affordable housing. There are many things that before we can go up and contribute to building an economy and aspiring to middle class, we need first. And I know that she wants the disability community to lead that. So I'm wondering if she's aware of the work of her colleague from New York, Senator Schumer, on 2427, or the Disability Integration Act. I wonder if she is ready to be a leader on that, if you think the party is. And since you talk about her bipartisanship ability, what do you think is her ability to pressure uh, the other and the Republican and on the Disability Integration Act, if you could speak to that a little bit. It's a crucially important question, um, and I want to answer it in a few ways. Um, I, I first, though, want to share a little bit about my mom's history. Her first job out of law school was going to work for the Children's Defense Fund. And when she was at the Children's Defense Fund, um, she worked on three key areas. Um, one was working to expose and then to shut down segregation academies in Alabama. Um, 20 years after Brown v. the Board of Education, um, there were still uh, efforts uh, throughout the South, uh, particularly in Alabama, to reroute public funds to support all white schools. Um, so she was part of the effort that exposed that. Um, and, and stopped them from being able to do that. Um, the second thing she did was she uh, spent time in South Carolina um, working to get young African-American men who were in the adult prison system uh, back into the juvenile system and ensuring that they were actually able to access the constitutional right to education um, that anyone in the juvenile system has. Um, the third thing she did was she was part of uh, an effort across the country uh, spearheaded by the Children's Defense Fund to figure out why so many kids weren't in school. And what her team and other teams found was that so many kids weren't in school because of mental and physical disabilities. What they also found was that a lot of the kids who weren't in school uh, actually had been poisoned by lead. So Flint is deeply personal to my mom because it's something that she's been working on for more than 40 years. Um, they uh, helped build a case that supported Tom Harkin's legislation that was passed that guaranteed, and it really made America one of the first countries to guarantee um, every child the right to a free public education in our country, regardless of mental or physical 
disability. Now we know that we haven't lived up to that promise,